When we think of extremely powerful entities and the gods of Greek mythology, there has to be some kind of order and system of justice, otherwise we essentially fall into chaos. That form of divine law and order comes from the titan goddess known as Themis, another one of the first generation of titans born from Uranus and Gaia. Themis's name itself was thought to mean order, and many considered her to be the personification of divine law. She was also seen as a goddess of prophecy, a governing figure to all of the most ancient oracles, including the Oracle of Delphi. This power of prophecy certainly aided Themis when she created the traditional rules of conduct which were to be followed by every god. It was also her divine voice that appeared to mankind and first introduced them to the idea of justice and morality, helping them form their first set of primal laws. Amongst these rules were the ideas of hospitality, good governance, the conduct of assembly, and the pious offering to the gods. Themis' overall role in the Greek pantheon seemed to be as the voice of reason and justice. Being a goddess of wisdom, she naturally made very good counsel, even earning her the nickname, the Lady of Good Counsel. She often acted as the interpreter of the god's will, a role she maintained far past the rule of the titans. Unknown to many, Themis was actually one of Zeus's first ever wives, and she acted as his first counsellor, often being seen beside his throne, advising him on the precepts of divine law and the rules of fate. Together Zeus and Themis had many children, the most noticeable being the Hores and the Mires, the Horai and the Marai as you may know them, the goddesses of the seasons and natural order, and the three goddesses of fate and destiny. It's because of her children that Themis had a strong connection with the goddess Demeter. The Horai that represented spring were thought to bring life, and the Marai were thought to bring death, almost reflecting the aspects of Demeter's own daughter Persephone, who also represented life and death being a goddess of spring, as well as the underworld. As I'm sure many of you would have guessed by now, Themis sided with the Olympians during the war, and when the war ended, she took residence upon Olympus, where she would maintain order and establish Zeus's authority. There is some mention of Themis in Hesiod's Theogony, where it describes the daughter of Zeus and Themis, Viki, as being temporal justice, meaning that she would work alongside her mother, but she was responsible for the physical execution of the law. Sentences and punishments fell to Viki, who would carry out the will of her mother and the Marai. There is a clear contrast between Themis and her daughter. Themis was responsible for the concepts of morality and justice, creating laws to govern by, whereas Viki was the physical embodiment of divine will, carrying out sentences and punishments as justice demanded. The classical depictions of Themis were thought to be that of a woman, holding a pair of scales in one hand and a sword in the other. The scales themselves were thought to represent Themis' ability to determine whether someone should be punished for their crime, an image that we also see in Egyptian mythology, with Anubis in the underworld, weighing the heart of the deceased against the feather of Mahat. The sword she carried was thought to represent Themis's ability to cut fact from fiction. There was no middle ground, you were either lying or telling the truth, and regardless of which it was, Themis could not be fooled. Themis' symbol was thought to be a tripod, as she was often depicted as sitting on a three-legged stool. Now we can dig a tad deeper here to try and understand the association between the two, Tripods are often used to support weight and maintain the stability of an object, particularly from downward and horizontal forces. Now this may be somewhat of a stretch, but perhaps we can see that downward force as being the gods from above, and Themis herself through law and order, providing the world of stability, a means to ensure that the force of the gods did not destroy everything that had been created. Now I could be completely wrong here, and perhaps Themis just found three-legged stools particularly comfortable, but it does raise an interesting point of discussion. You may see some modern depictions very similar to Themis, but instead the woman is blindfolded. Now these images are often considered to be either modern day versions of Themis, or Lady Justice, a figure that embodies many of the deities surrounding divine order. The blindfold represents impartiality, the idea that justice should be applied to everyone, regardless of wealth, power or status. It's quite easy to confuse Themis with Nemesis, the goddess of wrathful retribution, but Themis was in no way wrathful, she was pragmatic, extremely rational, and she never allowed her emotions to influence her decision. Themis was an extremely respected goddess, not only by the ancient Greeks, but in the Greek pantheon itself. Her presence almost demanded respect, quite often being referred to by the Greek gods themselves as Lady Themis. There are many wise gods and goddesses that feature in Greek mythology, but Themis was arguably the wisest of them all, creating a system that stopped the world from plunging into chaos. You can argue that some of the gods didn't always follow these rules, but for the most part they were adhered to, knowing that regardless of who they were, Themis would not grant any of the gods immunity or bias in their punishment. The image of Themis is one that I'm quite fond of, because she represents the pursuit of truth and the notion of impartiality, which justice demands. 
but I'd love to hear what you guys think. Do you like Themis and her pragmatic approach towards justice? Or do you prefer the physical and literal form of justice that her daughter takes? Perhaps you even prefer Nemesis and her approach to retribution? Let me know in the comments below. So for those of you wondering about the Medusa statue giveaway, I do apologise for the delay in announcing the winners, but Statue King have been kind enough to allow me to pick two winners, so congrats to Crystal Sims and Zachary Holmes, your statues have been shipped out to you guys. Statue King have also been kind enough to sponsor this video, and for those of you guys who don't know, they're a website that sells really cool statues, with a large selection of mythology based ones. To relate back to today's video, they even have a statue of Themis herself, and I'm quite happy to tell you guys that if you use the code mythology explained, or one word, you'll save yourself 10% of any mythology based statue, and shipping to the US is completely free. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then feel free to head over to statueking.com, I'll leave a link in the description in the comments for you guys to use. If you do purchase a statue, then feel free to tweet me a picture of it, I'd love to see which ones you guys choose. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, I'd like to thank all of you who stuck around towards the end, we are insanely close to 100,000 subscribers, and I want to thank everyone for the support, it's been amazing. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.